all right so this is the second video the second part of uh, of our lecture uh, in regards to the um, how we form a perception or impression on others yeah so the second part would concern more on how we use our memories yet to remember persons yet to, mem to remember people that circulates in our lives and how we organize them yeah and how we use the how, how we use this information that we keep in our memories to uh, to regulate our uh, social interaction with other people yeah so uh, the one of the most prominent theory in explaining how we use person memory in social psychology is that a an associative network or pro uh, propositional model of memory which means that we store yeah we, you could imagine you, we store those information yeah uh, those information about other people in our lives just like a spider web yeah so we try to form a web of association between those information yeah so we rarely keep uh, an information about a about a person an analog as a as an object yeah but we try to keep that we try to keep those memories about people by seeing them as a living object of course that's a living object so that we keep those information by assuming that uh, those people in our lives have certain roles or uh, they has certain disposition of of, of, of of traits for example or their disposition to behave in certain ways yeah so we don't keep a person we don't keep our memories about person but a person by seeing them as a static object but rather seeing them as as an object as as a subject yeah as a subject that uh, that uh, that is doing something and uh, that is that having certain characteristics or certain traits yeah so that is why we call it also propositional model yeah we keep those information about people by seeing them as a subject who is doing a preposition yeah who is doing is about to do something or having certain traits or certain characteristics so for example um we store preposition yeah instead of seeing uh, an object seeing a person as an object so for example we 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 tend to see uh, we tend to keep an information about for example you try to store information about me uh as a lecturer that is doing that is lecturing you about social cognition yeah or here uh in the example here is a woman who cooks rendang yeah and those proposition or a tendency to behave yeah it consists of several notes or several concepts or several ideas that you try to connect with each other so in a sentence uh, like a woman cooks rendang it means that we have three notes yeah three notes three different concept that we try to store all together as an associative and as an associative concepts that form prepositions so those concepts of course it involves woman uh, cooking and rendang yeah uh, and uh, so and those notes are linked by the idea so yeah we keep those uh, we we keep the link or the association between these ideas and uh, this is a very interesting study uh, that i just read recently about how uh, Democrats folders I really doubt that it's a general general folders because we know that in the US uh, the situation is uh, we could say extremely polarized now so everyone who see uh, who sees Donald Trump as a as a villain for example as a villain as a very as a, as a very very bad president we could say that it must be a democrat <laughs> it must be a democrat so um here we see how a democrat voter shows uh sees donald trump as a figure yeah so when we see here how they store memories or information about donald trump uh it is uh, it is formed as an association between notes or between different ideas or between different informations yeah so for example uh donald trump portrayed or we perceive or, or though uh, these people the, the folders perceive them as a negative as a rather negative uh negative uh, people uh, negative person yeah as a bad people as a bad person yeah here 
And we see his association with gun control, for example. We know that Donald Trump hates the idea of controlling the use of guns, yeah, because he 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 prefer to he prefers to make it a widely available and people can use gun uh, you can you can use gun uh, freely without restriction because you know he is supported by the NRA the association of the gun seller yeah so this is why the association between Donald Trump and gun control is rather negative but the voters especially the democrats would see gun control as a positive issues because this is because they uh, mo uh, most democrats would see gun control is a something that that need to be regulated yeah unlike the Demo uh, unlike the republicans yeah they would see it rather differently and we could also see another issues that are linked to donald trump in certain uh, topics uh, for example how donald trump sh uh, sees immigrations of course he has a negative here a negative attitude towards immigration we know that Donald Trump is rather hostile to immigrants, uh, but Democrats' voters would see immigration as something positive. It would enrich the diversity of the society, for example. And we could see that the association between Donald Trump and into immigration is negative. And this is how our, this is exactly how uh, we keep information about people. We see them as a connection or a link or a web of ideas instead of seeing them as a static object instead of say instead of keeping Donald Trump uh, as a as an object but we uh, but we see, but we tend to see Donald Trump as a as a subject that is associated with many different ideas altogether yeah so the links between these ideas yeah so these links between these ideas is extremely uh, dynamic and could be activated by rehearsing yeah so when a voter when a u.s voter uh, try to seek information about donald trump in the newspaper or in other medias that is available to them then they it is easier for them to keep more information about donald trump yeah so when we recall information we think about that of course the links becomes stronger yeah and the more different rings, yeah, to the specific idea, um, when we try, well, we try to connect uh, several concepts, so it makes it so so it is so it is easier for us to uh, to keep the certain information about a person. But when the association is extremely weak and extremely different, for example, then it is more likely uh, to be recalled. That is extremely uh, interesting as well. So, uh, if we have uh, if we have a lots of ideas about a person, for example, yeah, about uh, Donald Trump, yeah, he is linked to many ideas, to many concepts, to many many concepts from his family and the information about his uh, his nepotism with Russian uh, officials, and also his uh, attitudes towards immigration. So, if you have many many links or many different concepts or many different issues about a person it makes it it makes it easier for you to recall the information about this person i think this is makes sense because you have more uh, then you have a lot of different information about this person which makes it even 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 easier for you to 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 recall about this person yeah and the most interesting thing is that our brain hates uncertainty yeah, it's really hard. It's, it's it's really hard for us to ignore information that is extremely inconsistent with about a person. Then, for example, if you if you really know uh, your best friend, for example, yeah, uh, you really know your best friend, and you know that your best friend is a really really good friend, is a faithful friend, but one day they betray you, <laughs> and it hurts you a lot. It makes it quite consistent yeah their behavior is inconsistent with with, with pre-existing information that you have that you have kept uh, in your cognition and after the after the uh, the uh, after the tragedy of being betrayed by them it makes you harder yeah it makes it harder for you to 
to ignore that information. It makes it, it would be harder for us to trust them anymore because we tend to recall those inconsistent or incoherent information. Yeah, because you know that because you use you usually think that your friend is a faithful friend, but one day they betray you and it makes you uh, extremely disappointed with them. Then the next day it would be it, it would be even hard for you to trust them because the inconsistent information keep haunting you. Yeah, keep haunting you. It's really hard to ignore that. And we remember a people as a cluster of information. Yeah, so a cluster or a web of information that consists of different sets of concepts, including the traits, uh, the behavior, and also the appearance. So, for example, if you remember uh, Donald Trump in your memory, yeah, then the, the the concept also involves his traits, yeah, whether uh, he is rather abusive, yeah, to his political opponents, or his behavior is his annoying behaviors, lying, publicly lying in a, in, a, in a conference, in a conference, in a press conference. Or his appearance, his very odd hairstyle, yeah. So we keep uh, a, com a combination in information that is combination of traits, behavior, and appearance, yeah, in our memory. But uh, most likely, we keep traits as main information about a, about a person, and we store traits uh, in a form of propositional form. For example, if you see. Uh, uh, if you see myself, yeah, Bu Amel, as a as an unkind person, as an unfriendly person, uh, and it would be it it traits, yeah, yeah, unfriendly is a trait, but it also involves an inference of a behavior of a situation. You would come to conclusion that I'm an unfriendly unfriendly lecturer because of certain situation. Maybe in a classroom, uh, when you approach me, then I don't uh, and I react hastily to your questions, for example then your cognition would see me, would remember me as a unfriendly person. So it involves situation as well, yeah? Not only the trait itself, but also involves certain situation. And if you remember the theory that we have discussed in the last meeting, in the last, uh, in the last week, that is stereotype contents model. So we keep traits of other people uh, in a form of two, two huge category, two big category. The first one is whether this person is desirable, uh, is a desirable uh, person, yeah, is a desirable person to be involved socially. Yes, whether you see someone as a warm, as a warm person, yeah. So in a general social desirability of a person. And the second would be we keep uh, traits, we, we categorize uh, uh, traits as competence yeah whether someone is able to do something yeah it relates to the idea of for example uh, their intelligence whether someone is industrious whether they are efficient when working and something like that so basically we try to keep traits based on those two huge category that is whether someone is desirable yeah to be interacted in social context and the second would be uh, would be related to uh, their competence. Yeah, this is the the basic idea of stereotype content model that we have discussed in the last meeting. So what is actually what's what what we keeps in our memories? Yeah, instead of not uh, beside uh, apart from traits, behavior, and also the situation we are in, we could also keep appearance of a person in our memories. And that is based on a very concrete information, yeah, uh, based from our direct observation about these people. So when you see me as a short and has a full lips, yeah, because of of course you can you can you can keep that in your memory because you have a direct experience at uh, in observing my, uh, my my physical appearance, and we keep that as an analog, not not, not like uh, unlike the general person memory. That we tend to see, uh, we, then we tend to keep uh, information about other traits in a propositional form. But when it comes to physical appearance, we keep it as an analog, as an object. So we see a person like an object. Yeah. So we we tend to describe the pro uh, describe the object. We're not uh, we're not see we don't see this person as an uh, as a subject that is about to do something. Yeah. So this is the. The, the, the main difference, yeah, the main difference how we keep uh, information about other people 
uh, uh, the, the traits, yeah, and also how we keep uh, physical appearances in our memories. And that which um, and there are um, some research which I find quite fascinating. Yeah, uh, it's quite interesting that we could accurately recall faces. Yeah. Uh, all the time yeah so this is why uh, you could uh, encounter a situation where you completely forget the name of the uh, of, of, of other people but you still remember the face yeah easily so they, yeah of course it's easier to remember the face than the name but interestingly if you try to recall information about other people from other race yeah from other race mm -hmm. It makes you. It makes it even hard. It makes it harder for you to recall them, because of this in-group bias. Yeah, in-group out-group bias. Yeah. For example, if you have a friend from Africa, for example, and their physical appearances is completely different from you because they came. From, they come from a completely different race group. Yeah. You tend to see uh, Africans as a as just the similar people. You. It's really hard for you to, to distinguish between uh, one person to another, yeah, because because you come you come from a completely different race group, and it involves uh, the idea of in group and out group bias, which means it's easy for you to spot uh, to spot the difference between you and other in group members, yeah. If you are a Japanese, then it's easy for you to distinguish the difference, yeah, between uh, Japanese between your own race group but then it would be hard for you to spot differences uh, of people yeah differences from people from other race group so you see all africans like uh, just as if they are similar it's really hard for you to spot differences between them yeah and our person memory could be organized into different theme it could be organized by person or by the group yeah so we compile those information about uh, about other people we organize them by group or by people or it could be could exist uh, by one another we could uh, we don't categorize them by group or by person by the by the person but we could it could be coexisting to one another and we're going to discuss that later in this course especially in week eight when we're talking about the social identity theory so this is how we organize yeah uh, how we organize our uh, person memory based on a person by uh, we organize them uh, organize them by a person by the person itself or we organize them by group so it's, for example if you uh, if you try to remember three a uh, two uh, two of your uh, three friends yeah three of your friends Giovanna Ling and David yeah and they have different proposition here yeah so for example if Giovanna is a movie buff yeah and she is also a medical student then you try to organize them uh, organize this information by a uh, person so you see Giovanna as a movie buff and as a medical student or we could also organize by group yeah so you have two medical students as your friend that is Giovanna and David yeah and if you want to go for a movie, yeah, if you want to, if you want to go to the movie theater, then you can recall that your friend who is a movie buff is Giovanna. So this is how we store our memories. Very simple. And how we use our person memory, it could be heavily depends on how uh, we uh, how we try to achieve a goal in social interaction. So how we use the memory could be different depending on. The goal of interaction that we try to achieve yeah so if you want to if you want to comprehend people if you want to form an understanding or comprehension about uh, about people then you will use a very limited memory because we're not born with we're not born uh, with an accurate memory to, to to comprehend everyone this is something that is quite overwhelmed yeah we're very egocentric we don't use our best memory to comprehend people <laughs> And if you want to achieve a goal to memorize, yeah, to memorize something, to memorize someone, then we use uh, variable categories, and this is something that is quite disorganized. This is why it, uh, it, uh, it, 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 it requires a higher effort, yeah, to memorize uh, other people, yeah. 
if you want to form an impression about other people, then we tend to use the uh, uh, good memories and organize by traits because we need information about traits to make an impression. I think this is quite, quite simple, yeah, quite, quite common sense as well. And if you want to achieve, if you want to form an empathy, uh, to form empathy uh, about other people, then we use the same memory, the good one, and it it is organized by goals, yeah, because we are, uh, we are motivated, yeah, by the goals, uh, by by achieving, by forming an emotional empathy to other people. And if you want to compare yourself with others, then we tend to use the the best of our memories. And we try to compare it uh, because we compare it, but we tend to compare the psychological traits. Then, of course, it is ruled by how we see someone as a sets of uh, sets of traits or categories. And if you are anticipating an interaction, then also we're going to use the best our of uh, the best quality of our memory, and we tend to uh, use the well organized one because we. We actually we want to uh, uh, we want to be uh, we want to be seen as as a likable yeah as a likable person so that's why when we anticipate an interaction we tend to use the excellent and well organized one but when the actual interaction happens we tend to use the completely different sets of memory so it's the variable memory the weakest one the weaker one than the than the one we use when we anticipate an interaction and it again it depends on your goal yeah of the interaction itself so if you are interacting with me as a lecturer as a lecturer then the goal would be different when you are interacting with your boyfriend yeah because the people that you are interacting with are different and so that the goal of interaction itself yeah and that would be the end of the second uh the second part of this lecture and i'm going to prof i'm going to proceed to the third uh, video explaining about the social inference.